Barry. Kai Suk Wongzi and, and, yeah. and Barry Blakely. I told Dave I, that he could do the uh, I met the Barry last, last night. There. I have not met Kai. <laughs> but uh, All right. Have fun, boys. All right. Thank you. So, um, so we're going to do a little case study on Mazda. Come on in, Barry and Kai. Barry, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. It was great to meet you last night yeah, and hang fun. with you a little bit. It was, uh, it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, I said to Callie, it's, it's kind of hard being, being here, you know, without the kids, but, uh, but we had fun at Disney anyway and uh, at Epcot. Kai, how you doing? Dave Vellante. Dave Vellante, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. So, um, you know, Barry, last night we were talking a little bit about, uh, about your organization. And, uh, and so what I'd like to do is, is set it up. I and mean, we're here at the Dell Storage Forum. Um, this is uh, Dave Vellante, wikibon.org, and uh, this is our continuous coverage, Silicon Angles coverage of the Dell Storage Forum, which is why you guys are here. So, um, so Dell, Barry, why don't we start with you? Um, um, talk a little bit about uh, what you do at Mazda and, and the organization, the IT organization specifically, and then we'll bring Kai in and hear from him. Uh, well, I'm the infrastructure architect. Uh, I report to Kai, he's my manager. Uh, I have a team that handles the infrastructure of, of four guys, me and three other guys that handle the virtual infrastructure, the uh, storage, um, Active Directory, things like that. Uh, we have a networking team that handles all of the network. And then we have uh, application groups, programmers, and things like that. Uh, how many total in our IT department at this point? Well, uh, the total IT is about uh, 80 people and uh, we support about 1,100 users internal and about 15,000 users at the dealerships. And uh, so within our organization, um, I'm, um, Barry is part of my team. We um, are what we call the infrastructure services. So basically what we do is we actually work with the business application team in architecting the environment for any new business application projects. And so you guys are across uh, North America? Is it, is it yes, U.S. Uh, responsibility? Yeah, North we America? support, support uh, U.S., Canada, and Mexico. U.S., Canada, Mex Mexico, so the Americas. North America. Uh, North American. Yeah. Uh, it's Mazda North American Operations. Right. And uh, we, we so, Okay, North American Operations includes uh, Mexico. Mexico and Canada, yes. Uh, okay, cool. Yes. Um, so talk about a little bit about... Uh, actually, Kai, I wonder if you could start with, like, what is driving your business? Like, what... Uh, what when you're talking to the business heads or the application heads, what are they, what are they pushing you guys to do in, in IT? Well, um, the, zoom, that's zoom, <laughs> zoom, zoom, <laughs> zoom, zoom. You mean hurry so, up, hurry up, yeah. let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, faster, faster, faster. Well, <laughs> since we are part of the global company, uh, our parent company is Mazda Motor Corporation. So uh, some of the in business initiative is actually driven by Mazda Japan. And uh, so those were considered uh, global projects. And some of them are uh, like a North American initiative, how we would do business better, how we consolidate and sort of like provide the same systems and application to both Canada, uh, US, and also Mexico. So, um, so other projects will be more like US specific as far as, you know, if there's any target market uh, in certain area, there could be some application that drive that. And then, of course, um, we also have our own uh, technology projects where, you know, the, we have to keep up the, with the technology change and we have to be flexible and be nimble. We're not very big company, so uh, the idea for us is really to be flexible enough to change with the, um, the, the business requirement change. And, um, of course, you know, in, in the company, um, we are very much aligned with the business unit, so we have an IT manager, application manager, that servicing their business partner, and then from that they do through the business planning that become uh, our projects, and then they will come to us, and then we put together infrastructure to support that. So it's very project driven, which like a lot of IT organizations, yeah. and yes. uh, and it's and it's business project driven, not it uh, not IT project driven necessarily. Well, some, some of them are. Yeah. Some okay. of them are. are, are a technology project, for example, uh, when we uh, initiate the virtualization, those are IT projects. Okay, and we'll talk about some of those. Before, before we do, what's the biggest change in the automobile industry that you've seen in the past decade? Is it the globalization? Is it the move toward cost cutting? Is it energy efficiency? What, what, all of those? I mean, what, is the, what are the big changes in your industry that are driving 
Yeah. Well, in the, in, obviously, in in the past few years, you know, with the the gas price uh, rising and uh, you know with the downturn of economy, you know, all the car companies going through uh, a little bit of transformation, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, us at Mazda, we known to uh, make smaller cars and you know with fuel efficiency fun to drive and um, we actually um, have uh, technology that uh, coming out that going to help both the performance and also greater uh, mileage so um, it's it, we're very really excited about that so from the business transformation is really for us to actually kind of like uplift the brand image to be like we're not um, the, we we don't we not like the Toyota or Honda of the world, mm -hmm. but you know we wanted to be uh, the 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 one of the choices that uh, people uh, who like to drive cars. Um, Must just get cool cars, right? Fun I mean, to drive cars. Right, fun to drive. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we 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 not we like I said, you know, we not as big as those uh, big guys. So we we know that, and we're not competing with with them in uh, in many respects, right? So the transformation was really how we. Uh, strengthen the brand and uh, we have we've been really focusing on the customer loyalty and uh, you know as long as you know just like um, any other company if we, we keep our customers happy they'll come back uh, for service and buy more cars from right, us. right right all right barry let's talk about uh let's get into the whole it infrastructure you're an architect right uh spent a lot of time on storage probably you know virtual infrastructure as well um talk a little bit about your your shop you know, what it looks like, and paint a picture for us, if you would. Well, uh, we've done a lot of consolidation down and, and into virtualization, so uh, to get greater efficiency, greater return on investment, um, it's been a very good model for us, as it is for a lot of people. Uh, we needed to simplify because, as I said, my infrastructure team is four guys to handle it all, so we had a very complex physical environment at one point, like a lot of companies did. Uh, trying to maintain all that environment, trying to back it up, restore it if, and during testing and stuff like that. Test, disaster recovery test was becoming very, very difficult. Uh, also, all of our equipment was leased. So we had this lease return schedule. So we always had, the, the benefit was we always had new machines. We had new Dell servers coming in all the time. Um, but as for the business initiatives, they wanted more and more applications. So it meant more and more servers. So every time the lease cycle came around, it was time to re replace. Our team was scrambling to, to replace dozens of servers. And what was the storage at this the time? What, what were we talking about? The f three or four years ago or five years ago? What's the time frame? Uh, uh, 2005. 2005. So what was the storage on the servers? Was it a direct attach uh, storage? Uh, we had iSCSI. We were an early adopter of iSCSI. Uh -huh. uh, uh, a lot of uh, our databases were on iSCSI LUNs. Uh, so we had, uh, we tried to, Consolidate, and, and that was a, that was an effort to make it easier to maintain. So we would have the centralized SAN storage, iSCSI connections. We'd be able to maintain the storage that way, uh, rather than having uh, distributed completely into all the local servers and stuff. The reason I'm asking was a lot of customers I talk to when, when things come off lease, it's like, oh no, uh, yeah, we, exactly. we got to migrate data. So and, it, was, and it, right. was, it was becoming so difficult that we were not meeting those, we were leasing servers long beyond their lease expiration. Okay, so that, and that, that's not really a, <laughs> the ideal right. Right. financial I mean, strategy. And uh, obviously <laughs> it's not, it's, you know, it's not unique to us. Every, all, right. the, all the other companies are going through the same thing, right? So as as you not only not only uh, for lease replacement, but as far as how do you recover those systems, right? Yeah. Not the backup recovery of it, and how do you do uh, DR? And uh, so so all things uh, combined, you know, it just makes good sense for us. And uh, you know the idea of doing more with less, which has always been the key, and um, so we just have no choice. We couldn't handle all those physical servers, so we so we set the strategy to go with the virtualization, and we're just moving forward. So at that time, you said, okay, we're going to go server virtualization. Which a lot of customers do, as you said, right. Barry. But at that point, did you say, all right, we're going to go storage virtualization and synchronize that, or would that come later? Uh, that came a little bit later. A lot of storage vendors were promising virtualization, but uh, you know, some parts were virtualized, some weren't. Uh, uh, we're here at the Dell Storage Forum to talk about Compellent because we implemented Compellent. We we feel that is truly virtualized storage. We, we do too. We've written about this extensively. We yeah. use, use that as a poster child. Others, I mean, three-par Compellent. I mean, those are sort of the the yeah. clear 
built from the ground up virtualized architectures, right? So when we began virtualization, we ran into a lot of the same problems that other people did. As, as we migrated more and more machines from physical to virtual, we began to run into certain performance bottlenecks, both on storage, networking, uh, servers, uh, the backup window, uh, a lot of I.O. going through the ESX hosts, stuff like that. So uh, uh, the compelling storage, we looked at that as a way to solve some of those storage problems. We basically re-architected re our entire uh, virtual infrastructure. Uh, our chosen platform is being VMware. Uh, we use the compelling storage and we upgraded our network to 10G. Uh, because of the nature of how big of our organization is, we wanted to keep it very simple so that we could manage it. So we didn't want to do anything fancy with uh, raw device mappings or anything like that. We wanted VMFS volumes and, and just VMDKs. Uh, VMware was promising that the performance for even tier one databases would be fine on VMDKs and we, we took them at their word and we implemented it that way and we found that the performance was actually better than our physical environment that we really? had before. Yes. 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 Oh, that's interesting. And so, this uh, is for a critical application like SAP. Yes. Which so you guys are virtualizing SAP. That's correct. We've already virtualized it and uh, depending on the type of transactions we're, we're doing in our SQL servers for the SAP, uh, we have performance gains of anywhere from 80 to 400 percent in our virtual environment over our physical environment that we have. Have and you virtualized Oracle yet? Or? We don't uh, really have any Oracle. You're not an Oracle shop? No. no. Lucky you! <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, we have a lot of clients out there who want to virtualize Oracle, but it's not necessarily the uh, easiest thing to do because Oracle you know, doesn't want you to. But, uh, you don't have that problem. So that's no, cool. And SAP is very supportive of, uh, of, yes. of yeah, VMware. They, yeah, they were very supportive. Yes. We actually talked to SAP representatives who gave us a thumbs up for yeah. virtualization. So, yeah, there were there were quite a bit of concern, especially for application, a critical application like SAP. So obviously we had to reach out to partner um, like SAP VMware yeah. and to try to get them to kind of give our management a little warm and fuzzy feeling that say, yes, they will support SAP under virtualization, under VMware. Yeah, so Dell is a big part of that too because they uh, get the hardware platform absolutely. and they can, Dell can attract in an SAP <coughs> or VMware and get the attention, you know, yeah. but it must have been harder at the time for Compellent to do that. Now, Compellent obviously wasn't part of Dell when you no, chose Compellent, time. so right. you right. kind of stuck your neck out there, didn't you? A yeah. new company, small company, up in Minnesota, they're not in Silicon Valley or Boston, well, right? I mean, that's true. <laughs> actually, um, the transition hasn't been that difficult, okay? I mean, we've been on a different storage system for the past, what, seven years? Yeah. And that uh, obviously one of the concern I have for, for Barry's team, because since he only has like four guys, is really the learning curve of the how do how you manage a new storage subsystem. But you know, a compellent is very different. First of all, the architecture itself uh, and the software that they have to manage their system is very user friendly. And um, so, but what really kind of um, help us decide or sell it to our management is really their co-pilot, okay, so... I Talk mean, about that a little bit. Um, people, people have been talking about co-pilot this whole week. I mean, yeah. that, that was... That can't say enough good about it. Yeah, we can't say enough good things about co-pilot because, you know, we did the, uh, we did a uh, EBC visit the, uh, their headquarter in Minnesota and um, we actually met some of the co-pilot folks and we actually see how they handle the calls and uh, the fact that it's great that when you call support, you always get a live person. It's a 24 seven exactly. uh, program, right? And they're not just dispatch, they engineers that actually know our system, in some cases more than we do. And uh, we've yeah. noticed that even late at night, if we had to call, uh, the graveyard shift support technician was just as knowledgeable as the daytime. The, the the quality of knowledge doesn't degrade. Doesn't degrade no. at midnight, three a.m. Right. Really. Yeah. yeah, and and that's really, you know, it's like, I guess bar none, number one, the best. Yeah. yeah so uh, it's a unique program, isn't it? it? Is. That, I it mean, is. you know, everybody's got you know, these days some kind of support twenty four by seven, but not super high quality engineers. You know, waiting for you to call. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, that's right. Uh, and and yeah. they do stay with uh, you know if you do uh, need some help, they they do stay uh, with with us from the start to the to the completion. 
I wonder if we could get some of our uh, our consumer companies to take that kind of service. You know, like when you call a bank and you get put on hold. And, you know, you call on the airline and you can't get a live person. Well, Copilot you know, so. would be a great model. For that. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. But, uh, okay, so um, you know, Kai, you were talking about uh, you were concerned about the the whole learning of a new system because right. a decade ago, if you went from let's say an IBM to an EMC, it was a whole new learning experience, right. wasn't it? And uh, so you didn't have that that issue with compellent it was sort of I mean there had to be some learning curve right I mean there was a learning curve but it was a uh, very quick uh, uh, I've heard people say that even the help desk could run it but don't don't quote me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's, I was uh, gonna say it's, it's so simple the manager can do it but he doesn't <laughs> yeah, touch no, it. Don't, don't touch don't <laughs> my sand <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Now, you guys do an iSCSI, right? You're not doing any FC, right. or FCOE? Yeah, yeah we, uh, we, have we were an iSCSI shop prior mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the physical world. So as we moved into the virtual world, we were very comfortable with that technology. We decided we didn't need fiber channel, uh, any of the complexities there. We decided to keep it simple and utilize our existing physical network for that. And what were you doing before? Was it you had a, uh, what was the storage before, Compellent? Um, the model or the? Was it a SAN? It, it was a, it was a SAN. SAN yes. yeah. iSCSI uh -huh. SAN? Yes, same, SAN. same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we were early adopter of the iSCSI SAN network, and uh, it's been working well for us and simplify a lot of things. There's no uh, fiber channel or HBA that we need to bring in for every server, and uh, also there's no SAN switch and, you know, all the management simple. that goes it's with so it. It's so simple, right? We kept exactly. It simple. We kept it simple. So when we went to the virtual infrastructure, we kept it simple again. We didn't use any iSCSI initiators. We just used the software-based built into ESX, kept it very simple. Uh, there was a lot of people out there saying, oh, well, your performance might not be as good, and we have not. Well, that's a big concern that. about iSCSI, right? I mean, I talked to a lot of guys in, in FC land, and they say, hey, if you're going to put mission-critical data on the storage array, it's got to be on FC. I'm not going to do, do anything else. What, what would you say to that? Well, we have not experienced any problems at all. Uh, for example, our SAP environment, very large databases, terabytes databases, and uh, a lot of transactions going on. And uh, we don't experience any, pr like, like I said, when we went from physical to virtual, we had a, depending on the transaction type, we increased our performance 80, 80 to 400 percent. Yeah, so, I mean, there's really, it, it's, it's almost like politics when you talk about, you know, yeah. protocols. Yeah. You know? yeah. But, uh, so that's good. Um, Layer now, 8 on the OSI model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you, um, did you quantify the impact? of the move to Compellent? Did your management want to see that? Do you use like the, you know, the hero report inside of Compellent? If you use that at all, the one that shows you the we, allocated versus written and you know. We use some money of that. Saving. We use some of that, but the greatest impact was actually the, the users themselves. The, How their, so? Their, the user experience was better. Uh, as they would do, operate transactions in, in their uh, SAP GUI, they would, uh, right. they were reporting a much better experience themselves. Because of performance? or Because the performance was there. Right. Yeah. And then their, their batch job, uh, the nightly batch that process a huge amount of transaction, all the accounting process that goes through that system, um, they actually, you know, that that's where we see the, the biggest uh, performance improvement. Did it affect your backup? Did you change the way in which you back up? I mean, both we, virtualization and of the storage and the servers? We re-architected the entire thing, soup to nuts. Oh, so can we talk about that a little bit? Because sure. backup is, uh, is a Very real important. pain. Well, yeah. let's, let's talk about what our backup was prior. Yeah, great. In, the, in the physical environment, we were very traditional. We had the, the physical server. We did have the iSCSI lens. We used some certain storage technologies to, to, to back up at the storage level, but we also did agent-based backups, you know, and you know, streaming backups, things like that. So. Uh, it was very, uh, and as the data grew, the backup times increased, and pretty soon the backup times were overlapping with production hours. And, and your backup window, I'm presuming, was not increasing. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't. No, in fact, as as those processes increased, we had more need for more batch jobs to occur at night, and the batch jobs were interfering with the backup schedules, so they were competing for time. So with virtualization, we decided to look from scratch, and we decided let's virtualize all of these databases, these applications. Um, let's look for a backup solution that is geared specifically for VMware. So we did that. So uh, we chose Veeam as our backup solution. We wanted a, a backup solution that would... Uh, what software you were using before this? Was it uh, a just traditional, traditional, traditional you don't have to name backups. names, but yeah, right. 
Yeah, yeah. The okay. more so traditional it's agent based. So, so in, in, and you're backing up the tape. Backing up the tape. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. So we changed right. it. We back up the. Yeah. Disc. Veeam does a good job in, in VMware. They're, uh, I've actually I haven't talked to them. Are they at this event? I don't know if I've seen them, but I saw them somewhere recently. And, uh, I think they might be over here. Maybe it was a uh, VMUG. We've been very busy. We haven't been able to see much. You guys go to VMUGs? <laughs> you go to the VMUGs? Uh, so, I've, I've been to a couple. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. And uh, Veeam has a good presence. Okay. So they've got. Um, so you're using Veeam uh, to do the backup. Um, so uh, again, when we simplified our storage and we our VMware, we just use VMFS volumes and VMDKs. That's what Veeam requires. So that all works serendipitously together. So uh, we back up to disk now to a Dell NX3100 NAS device. And that's deduped, which is is that deduped? Uh, yes. No? The, the, is native deduped in the in the Veeam software? The Veeam or is it client side deduped? Yes, and mm -hmm. the compression. So it's client side excellent. deduped, right? It's, yeah, Veeam do, Veeam does it. Yeah, client yeah. side. Yeah, so so your because presumably your IOs explode when you go to server virtualization. Yeah, exactly. Right? Okay. So and, and, and so you're reducing the the load in the network by by deduping at the client side. Is right. that correct? Do exactly. you see that effect? Or? Oh, we're getting performance numbers that that Veeam is excited about. Uh, so with the, the the backup with the Veeam, you know, the way it works is it uses utilizes the VMware snapshot capability. It quiesces the IO. Chris the IO on the SQL database so that we have consistent database backups, and that was critical for us, especially for our SAP critical data. Um, the, the IO is quite quiesced very quickly. The snapshot's taken, IO resumes. The system is immediately back online to do any nightly batch processing or production or whatever. In the meantime, the snapshot is being backed up by Veeam to disk and at high compression rates and at very, very high speeds. We we have stellar performance numbers. That's so, all local so far, or no? You, yes, it's all, be, all, all it's local. So far, we're talking just local. Right, back yes. up to this. And then you shoot it off-site, or? Uh, that's plans for the future. Okay. We're, we're planning on taking the NX3100 and maybe using DFS or something to replicate to, that to an off-site location. So, so just uh, to give you uh, some of the performance number that we were seeing, our uh, uh, SAP database, uh, it's about 3.4 terabytes in size. And um, with the incremental backup, we take the snapshot and that takes, what, 35 seconds? And then the incremental backup itself take about between, uh, depending on how, how much, how many changes that happen throughout the between cycles, um, the backup, the, the real backup actually took from between 20 to an hour and a half. And that was it. So we're here. Hours. We're we're and here with Mazda. We're talking about a case study, um, and we're, 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 we've entered the backup realm, which is always the it, to me the backup is the biggest pain, right? I mean, it's yeah, always it been the biggest pain point <laughs> in in, a, in our industry. So, so you're 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 have you been able to dramatically change the whole backup window pain? I mean, it sounds like, uh, but you haven't eliminated the backup window concept, right? I mean, let me ask it this way: So you're you're taking are you taking continuous snapshots? Um, or in, in, in no, we, we're still maintaining the the single. So it's so it's it's daily incremental, and you're doing weekly full. Weekly full, yes. Do you, and, and do you do anything else special for your mission critical stuff? Like, do you take a daily full for SAP, or for instance? Or? Uh, well, no, we we haven't had the need to do no. that. No, okay. Yeah. So it's it's daily incremental, weekly full. Are you doing any archiving of data? Uh, that's what? at the application level. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Which might reduce the amount of data that you have to right. back up on the weekly so phone. So now, the, as we move towards the co-location, then we will also use the Veeam Replicator and the instant recovery um, that Veeam provides. Yeah, we'll be replicating our Tier 1 applications to uh, another VMware cluster at another location. What do you think about this notion of, uh, of, of taking CDP, taking, you know, Snapshots every 15 minutes. Um, is it just overkill for you guys, or do you think that has potential? Or what are your thoughts? I think on that? that has potential. Uh, I think uh, we might be implementing that in the future for uh, our more mission critical applications. So, do you think that you can start to? Because most of the customers I talk to, uh, and you kind of fall in this category, I think. But actually, we should. I should. I should test that before I say this. <laughs> but basically most customers take a, a one-size-fits-all approach to backup. This is our backup, this is the service level that you're going to get, and we're going to apply that to all the data. Is right. that what you do? Currently that's what we do. Yeah. Um, because so, there's not really a better way. Right, I mean, it's, right. It's, it's right now complicated. We, we still have a mix of, of old technologies and new technologies, but as we move everything over to VMware, 
uh, we are beginning to use the Veeam product for that. So the one size fits all as far as that's concerned, we, we want to get down to a, a single backup solution uh, as we virtualize 100%. Um, but based on the application, the criticality of the application, or tiering or stuff like that, we m might employ different uh, service levels. So in theory, you could use the compellent system to take you know, space efficient snapshots, if I could use that term, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, and, and then um, and then do some kind of CDP, whatever, 15 minutes, half hour, and then take a copy, shoot it off-site at your convenience. Is, is that, am I thinking about that the right well, way? Well, I think, I think the future will, will include some of that. Uh, right now, we're, like I said, we're, using, uh, we're not using RDMs or anything like that. We're keeping it very simple. Yeah. We're using just Veeam as our backup solution. We're not using the snap, the, the replay technology and compellent for that. Replay is what they we, call it, right? We, do, we have used it. It was very critical for us in upgrading our SAP environment. So we had... Oh, uh, when you're doing the migration. Right, when we yeah, did the migration, okay. we had uh, 4.6, and we went to EC6.6, so, uh, or ECC... 4.7 4 to ECC6, ECC6 yes. right. <laughs> Sorry. So um, <laughs> to get from one to the other, it's not just building a new one and migrating your data over. We had, there was various stages to upgrade both, you know, the operating system, the versions of SQL, and SAP. So to do that without risking our data, we use the compellent replay technology to create replays and then create views, where we can mount those views in the new servers uh, and, and perform the upgrade of the databases and things like that. So, so did, that was critical for us to get from SAP old version to the new version. So, so from an architect's perspective, to do what I'm talking about, there'd have to be some type of integration between the Veeam and the compellent, and you really want to rely on the Veeam to do that, because it's sort of controlling the whole backup, right? Because of our simplistic model that yeah. we're trying to maintain, we're, we're, we're using the Veeam. Um, we, chose Veeam as a software-based backup solution as opposed to a hardware-based backup solution. It allows us the flexibility to use different hardware at different locations. However, with Compellent, we're, we're so happy with the product, we're going to be using Compellent at our remote location <laughs> as well. <laughs> but uh, the Veeam, the idea early on was, you know, the Veeam would allow us to back up and replicate that data to other storage right. if, if we wanted to. But, so, uh, so some of the thoughts there were you know, as when, when we first uh, brought in the compellent and when we put together the Veeam backup solution. And uh, today we have um, like the cold site subscription for DR at the, you know, the cold site facility. And uh, so what we were kind of talking through was that the what if scenario, what if they don't have compellent on the other end? So that's why we, we chose to use the software-based replication so that we could, even without the co-location facility, we could do the Veeam replicate, replicator to, to the hot sites. Yeah, it's going to give uh, you more flexibility. Exactly, yeah. that regardless of what they have on the other end. Yeah, you love compellent, but you don't want to get locked in, and you know, you just it's always good to keep your options open. Right. Yeah, our ultimate goal is to have our own co-location facility in another one of our offices, and uh, our plan is to put compellent in there, yes. Okay, so that's going to extend into your DR strategy? Is yes. It, uh, all right. Yes. All right, good. You know, I've been, I've been thinking about Dell and watching their moves of bringing in, you know, the file company compellent, you know, obviously the um, uh, Equalogic, and, and backup is an area that I think is you know, the next untapped area for, <laughs> for these companies to really right. solve. I think, right. I think Dell could really add some value there. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know, what advice would you give Michael Dell in that regard? Well, I think he's, he's taking the right approach, and uh, I, I see his acquisitions. We were very happy to find him uh, acquiring Compellent because uh, we thought that was a great match. We were already a Dell shop. We had Dell servers and stuff. And, yeah. uh, then we already had the Compellent and uh, the marriage of the two, and yeah. officially like that was, was great for us. We, we, we were really uh, pleased with that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard, right? These small companies, they come out, they innovate. You know, we say we need more startups, but it's hard for IT, you know, to get adopt some of these technologies sometimes, right? right? because you, you don't know how long, you know, in some cases when the eco economy w goes bad, I don't, we, you know, this little startup could go away. So, you know, sometimes they do have the great technology, but they don't have the, the big company funding to support what they're planning to do as, as, as far as technology vision. Yeah, it's a real trade-off for, right. for, for IT, because you want to innovate, you want to simplify, I and mean, it sounds like it's had a big impact on your business, particularly in terms of the complexity of managing the systems. Absolutely. Um, and you grow, are you growing fast? I mean, do you growing data like crazy, like everybody else, or is it? 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that means <laughs> if you don't do something about it, like Kyle, you were saying do more with less, you're going to have to hire people and brute force it, and that's not a good solution. That's right. going to make you less competitive as an organization. Right. You know, and you're in a very competitive industry. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, good. We like to keep ourselves lean and mean, and it's all about zoom, zoom at Mazda, so... So yeah, zoom zoom. Love yeah. it. Um, I gotta throw that in. <laughs> so I, uh, I wonder if you guys could. My final question is, um, folks out there looking to whether it's virtualized servers, virtualized storage, simplify their their infrastructure. What advice would you give them from the standpoint of of an uh, of an architect, and then from the standpoint of, uh, of of an executive trying to sell this concept to uh, to to his organization? Well, as an architect, I try to look forward. I try to see what the future is going to be. And I try to look for solutions now that will play into that future role. So moving forward, I, I want to keep the key thing, simplification for our environment. Uh, the complexity that we had before was very hard to manage. And as we simplified it, it becomes easier and easier to manage. So uh, I can get sleep at night. I don't get calls in the middle of the night. My guys get sleep at night. So. <laughs> one, one customer said, I got my weekends back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's from, from an architect's perspective, yes. Keep it simple and, and look at your acquisitions and technology with an eye towards the future of how it's going to play down the road. Great. Okay, Guy, we'll give you the last word. Any uh, f closing thoughts? Okay, well, uh, from, from my point of view, I think the very key to our success is actually uh, to gain the management support at the very early on in the project. Okay, so um, you know we have we've been very fortunate that we have our CIO that's very much in tune in what we plan to do, and you know he's he's actually attending our planning session and the strategy sessions, and he um, agree with the idea and he fully support it, and that is to me. That's like 75% of the battle, mm -hmm. right? So because, you know, once, he's, once he um, endorsed that and then, you know, we, all we have to do is just set the strategy, put the plan together and just start executing little steps toward that plan. Do your jobs, do what you're good at. Right? That's it. That's right. <laughs> and then, you know, the, our CIO will, will take care of the rest when he'll go to the executive committee and get the funding to support what we want to do. And... Uh, and we make it worthwhile, and we, we, we can prove that we, we can do uh, more with less. You guys seem very relaxed, you know. You know <laughs> usually, oh, it's nice to see stressed out IT it's, people. It's uh, easy to talk about these products. Yeah, they're, good. They're great. Yes. All right, Kai Sukwongzi, am yes, I saying that properly? Correct. And Barry Blakely from Mazda. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great having you guys. Thanks for having me. Thank right, you. Good meeting you last night, and nice to meet you today, Kai. Thank Take you. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Thanks.